Shalom everyone and Chodesh Tov, we are celebrating the beginning of the month of Nisan, uh, the month of Aries in the Hebrew Biblical calendar. And uh, we have to remember that this is a very important month since this is the first month of the Biblical year, <clears throat> which means in the uh, Torah, the five books of Moses, and later on in most books, uh, the month of Nisan, Aries, is being uh, called the first month. So this is the first month, and it is uh, the beginning of the biblical year, although Rosh Hashanah is on the seventh month, okay? Uh, it's We bless each other with Happy New Year, but it's no New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve is tonight, which means the new moon of uh, Nisan. Okay, so because it is the first month of the year, that means that this month has very uh, important uh, power because the first has the seed of the whole year. And this is also why <clears throat> this month is called in the Torah, Chodesh Ha'aviv, the month of the spring. So in Hebrew, Aviv, spring, but also Aviv, you can see in, inside the word Aviv, spring, Av Yud Bet, the father of 12, which means the month of Nisan has this, is the seed for all 12 months of the year. And this is really important. And the question is, uh, what does that mean? How does that affect the rest of the year? And most importantly, uh, what do we do about it? How can me, each one of us, use that information in order to do something about what's going to happen in the coming 12 months? Okay, so first of all, uh, when we get this information in Exodus 12, uh, Chapter 12, verse 2, it says, God is telling uh, Moses and Aaron to teach the Israelite uh, that this is the first month and also to give them the secret of what is called the blessing of the new moon, which is a very, very, very important secret. Uh, <clears throat> and this, what it says, the verse itself says, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Now, we have to understand that English is, uh, is a translation. What can we do? But the, uh, you have to read it in the Hebrew. And the, in the Hebrew, the over here you have two times, you have unto you and to you, but in Hebrew it's lachem, which means it's yours. Uh, so the translation here is a little bit, uh, but how you can't write it in English because it doesn't fit inside the, uh, the sentence. So what does it mean that the word yours appears twice about this month being the head of the months, the first of the months of the year. So first of all, so we have uh, some commentaries saying lachem, yours, is also the letters melech, king. And what does it mean, a king? Okay, you have some kings that, uh, you know, are just shame. Uh, a king was supposed to uh, that a king is a symbol of, uh, of uh, royalty, a symbol of leadership, a symbol of uh, power, a symbol of respect. So the word king, melech, is very important in this context, and we see why. Because uh, it is said in many places, that 
Melech, king, is initials of four, three letters, three words. Moach is the first letter, Mem. Second letter is Lamed, Lev, a heart. And the third is Kaved, liver. When a person is a king, which means he is the king, the ruler, the royal, of his life, this is when things work in the order of brain, heart, liver. Moach, Lev, Kaved. First comes the brain, and the brain is responsible for the vision, the values, the uh, goals, setting things where they should be according to the interests of the person. When the brain sets the vision and the brain is focused on the vision and the values and the goals, then the heart will follow. After that, the liver will follow the, the first two. The initial will be melech. A person like this has control over his or her life, his or her destiny. Because when we put first our vision and values, when we put first the vision of what is the person I would like to become, I'm working hard to become, and I can never set my focus upon that, from upon that, which means this is my vision and I'm going to always fight to be that person, that being, then the, the heart and the liver will follow after the brain and serve the brain in its mission to achieve, uh, to achieve, to achieve spiritual uh, fulfillment, awareness, and royalty, which means kingship, controlling my life by making myself um, a vessel for the light of the creation, which is supposed to be the vision of every human being. We were created to be the vessel for God's light. And any action that is not serving that purpose is basically uh, uh, diminishing our light, uh, destroying our journey, and we will have one day or another to come back to ourselves and remember that it's ours to fix, and no one can do it for us. It's ours to fix. So the word lachem, yours, which also the same letters as king, the ruler, the control, everything goes together. And let's see how does that affect uh, the, and connects to the month of um, Aries. So the month of Aries is according to the book of formation, created, created by God, with the letter, the Hebrew letter, hey. And the Hebrew letter, hey, is very important over here because the Hebrew letter, hey, means kingdom, means control. Remember, the king means control. It is about controlling the vessel, controlling the desire, controlling the vision controlling the might of the person. We can see that visual as the Zohar is teaching us uh, that when it is said in the Torah, in the, in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 12 again, it says over there, when the Israelites are ready to leave Egypt, they take the uh, ram, slaughter the ram, that was twilight just on the 
before the full moon of the month of Aries. And what do they do? They slaughter the ram. They also, on that day, they circumcise themselves, the men. They put together the blood of the circumcision and the blood of the ram, the slaughtered ram, the gods of Egypt. They took uh, three branches of hyssop and they took the blood and put it on the door. Now, they took, put it on the two sides of the door, the doorpost and the lintel. So they made the shape with the blood of the letter Hay. And the letter Hay on the door uh, saved them because when God hit with a plague all the firstborn of Egypt, he skipped, passed over the homes of the Israelites with the shape of the hay on the door, and they were not hurt. So we are talking over here about few symbols of control. Here there's a plague. It, it hits, it plagues the Egyptians. They, the firstborns die, but they control that. They are not being hurt and plagued by the, uh, by the plague of the firstborn. So we are starting two weeks earlier on the new moon of Aries. And as we said, Lachem, it is yours. Now the Zohar is saying, what does it mean it is yours? God is saying the the uh, the sanctification of the new moon is mine, which means I am the one who decides when a new month, I'm giving the order, I'm giving the power for every month. When the new moon is starting, then the whole month is starting and I'm giving him the blessing. It is mine, or however, I'm giving it to you from now on, it is yours. And what does that mean? If you can control the month of Aries, and later on, by the blessing of the new moon of every month along the year, you control the flow of what we call destiny. Because we know months, new moons, all of that is connected to astrology. And the ancients at that time of the Exodus they had no idea you can go above the months. Whatever is written in the stars, this is your destiny. And you can find it in many other uh, uh, religions in the ancient times that it is very, very clear, the mythology that a human being cannot do anything against the stars. Destiny is destiny. The moment it is being this uh, uh, destiny to whatever will happen, it, you as a human being, you have very little uh, power to intervene. And here God is saying, and the message is very clear over here, I'm giving it to you. You from now on, you are the ones. I'm outsourcing to you the power, the responsibility to bless the new moon, to decide the new moon, okay? Which means from now on it is yours, which means you have from now on the power to change destiny. Now, how is this connected to what we see in front of us? Human beings, since early times in history, always find themselves trying to fight destiny and they always find themselves in the same place, and even worse. So, a predeterminism, fatalism, became a world religion. It's like a very, very interesting part of religion of the ancient day, uh, world, and even today. Whatever is destined, whatever God decides, that will happen. Uh, does God really want people to suffer? Uh, no. Uh, why not? He's only good. He is capable of emanating only endless light and good. So uh, 
So why do we suffer? Because when we do not allow the light of the creator to flow into our lives, then we suffer because uh, how this, does that happen? When the heart comes first or where the liver comes first. When in Hebrew, if the heart comes first, then you're not melech, a king, you're a lemech. It's uh, somebody who has no responsibility and no good luck. But what about when the liver comes first, then you are klum, you're nothing. You're really a nobody. Which means when the liver comes first, and the liver symbolizes the uh, anger, the uh, center of anger in the body. And when you cannot overcome the anger, and you cannot overcome the feelings, uh, the reactive feelings, which are symbolized by the heart, in, with the vision of the brain, of course, then you're good for nothing. And you have no control. How, so what was uh, people's re uh, reaction? Most people basically, is, that's the way I was created. That's the way I am. And nobody can ever overcome his system, his system of desires, wants, cravings, and so on. So the result is that you feel that everything is predestined and we have no control. The moment you bring in the idea that you have the ability to bless the new moon, which means you can go above the stars and the zodiac, you can go above destiny, you can go above whatever is written is there till you change it. So that is the message. Uh, I think one of the most important messages of the month of Aries, which is all about overcoming our emotions, anger, uh, all of these inner passions, lower passions, and the symbol for that is the Hebrew letter hey. Controlling the hay, we will see, controlling the hay is the purpose of this month. Because the way we are going to control the letter hay, we are going to experience the coming year in the 12 months to come. So how do we see that? When we look at the, the study of Rabbi Isaac Loya about the seder plate matzot, Kavana, the meditation of the uh, matzot of the seder plate. And Rabbi Hezekiah is saying the centerpiece of the whole holiday of Passover, it's called also Chag HaMatzot, the holiday of the matzot. And Rabbi Hezekiah is saying you have to visualize the letter He over the three matzot on the seder plate. The three matzot are uh, basically, the top one is right column, chokhmah, corresponding to Kohen. The second one is uh, left column, bina, corresponding to the Levi, the Levite. And that is the central column, Israel, Israel. All of them, you have to visualize the letter He on each of these three matzot. Although if you notice, the, it's the, the, the structure of the letter He is different between the three He's. However, it is all around the letter He. And why the matzah? Matzah is again the symbol of, of, the, uh, of the desire, which means Matzah is made of grains, mostly wheat, but you can make it also of other four grains, okay? And especially the wheat and the other grains, they are, uh, those grains have the power to make bread that rises. And bread <coughs> is a symbol of sustenance, desires, uh, Whatever fulfillment is about, uh, and that's about the bread. So the bread has that special power that other grains do not have, which means 
uh, rice does not have it. That is the Far East. Uh, um, what else? We, what we have in Americas? We have the uh, uh, we have the um, um, corn, uh, and there are some other grains. They do not have gluten, which means they cannot rise like bread. And the rising of a bread, there's something that is happening, a process of, of fermentation that is happening in grains that you can make matzah out of them and they can rise and you can find it in other grains. And that fermentation creates something that is basically considered to be vessel that it's satiating like, like uh, no other foods. That's why life was surrounding around bread, and the bread is a symbol of fulfillment, happiness, and so on. There's a special mystical power in bread, and also in Israel, Passover is the time that, that wheat is flowering. By the way, uh, I think that uh, no, first of all, scientifically, the only place you can find uh, wild wheat is around here, Israel and the neighborhood, which means you can really find the original wild wheat. It's called the mother of wheat, the original plant that from it came finally the uh, cultivated wheat that the most of the world is living on that wheat. It's coming from Israel. It's, this is the time the wheat is, uh, is blossoming. Uh, the flowers are coming, uh, it's flowering, and which means within 50 days, by Shavuot, it is ready for the harvest. So let's, uh, let's understand, when we are talking about the wheat as a symbol of power, and the bread as a symbol of want and desire, it is a symbol that uh, basically desire, or the letter He, is the center of our being. Now, what do we do on the of Passover? We don't do not eat bread. We eat matzah, which is basically a tzimtzumized bread. It's a bread that went through tzimtzum, contraction. The bread is not allowed to rise, okay? And that's called matzah. What do I mean you do not allow to rise? There, there are laws, it says that from the moment you wet, you pour the water on the flour, the dry flour, and you have to make sure that the flowers dry from the moment of harvest, okay? And then uh, from the moment it is, uh, you pour the water on the uh, flour and you start to knead the dough, you have 18 minutes till the matzah comes ready from the oven. So it does not have the time to rise. And if you've been to matzah factory during the kneading of the dough, the dough is being hit badly with big, uh, big, big uh, uh, <coughs> metal rods, just not to allow it to rise. Why? Because you want to have something very special. This month, that the letter A is in control of this month, we want to control the hay. We want to control the desire. We want to have the desire under our control. This is why it says yours. It is yours to control. And therefore, during this month, we will do a lot of things that are basically meant taking control over our desires because our job is not to be victims to our crazy desires. We need to uh, basically control them, direct them, instead of them controlling and directing us. If we do that on the month of Aries, the rest of the year will have it much easier. What does that mean? It means that uh, 
the letter hey which is a symbol of the desire the symbol of the want if you control it you have peace you are at peace you are at shalom you have a peaceful more uh peaceful life and you have better uh chances to achieve the fulfillment of your needs however if you do not take control over the year which means if you do not take control over your desires which means first of all your desires must serve your vision and as we said because we were created in the image of god our vision is to be the vessel for god's light and the only way to be a vessel for god's light is be by the law of affinity we need to create that vibration that we don't let our desires loose which means whatever i feel like i get it i take it because i want so that's totally we know no discipline no control which means people with no discipline no control they can go far impossible the pe- the moment you have is a, a discipline which means you always make sure that your desires serve the vision of the big picture then you have the key for success and the most important time of the year to work on it this is during the month of aries for everyone not just for people of the sign of aries the seven night is a full moon of aries in the morning after we have the special uh, uh, morning service of passover and the peak is at the uh, prayer of musaf in the morning prayer and over there we had birkat hatal the blessing of dew which means this is like really bringing out that from now on we determine the the bliss we are going to experience spiritually and physically economically for the next 6 months till the blessing of the rain which is going to be on simchat torah now what do you see in front of you you see the name of the month of aries tale when you control the hay which we're supposed to do on the night of the seder when we control the hay then what's left is te- is tet lamed tal do and the do over here is a symbol of bliss and flow of good fortune for the coming year if you have control over the hay over the desire discipline direction meditation heart bind over heart over liver then you are a king and the rest of the year will be blissful and full of good fortune okay so now this is on a personal level now let's expand on the more general level the tam on the tractate of rosashanal page 11a says they were redeemed on the sun the israelites and it is destined that they will be redeemed on the sun which means what is redemption if not the freedom to have it your way the freedom that you're not basically controlled by whims and uh, anger and uh, passion and all kinds of desires they basically have a short living fulfillment uh instant gratification however they do they do not serve the big picture goal so this is on the personal level but it's also we have to remember that it is also on the general level and that's why the talmud says that the secret of the redemption the final redemption is also in the month of nisan uh continue then we read in the passover hagada rabban gamliel said in each and every generation a person must see himself as if he is living egypt now 
which means every month of Nisan, we have to see ourselves like we have another opportunity to experience either a personal redemption during the month of Nisan and hopefully a general redemption. And that's why uh, by the end of the night of the Seder, uh, we finish the last line of the line, the line of the, the night of the Seder is Nirza. Nirza, which means the whole, all your uh, sins are being appeased, atoned, and now it's time for redemption next year in Jerusalem, the Shana Haba Yerushalayim, which means we are praying that the personal redemption will lead to the general redemption. Okay. Another, like, just two more additions. Uh, Shla Kadosh, a, a great holy uh, rabbi from Europe uh, some 500 years ago. Uh, the month of Nisan, because it is the head of the month, of the whole month, as we said, Av Yudbet, the father of all 12 months, every day of the month of Nisan has the holiness of Rosh Chodesh, which means the whole month of Nisan, we have that opening, cosmic opening, so when we control our desires, the more we can basically discipline ourselves and work on visualizing, uh, creating, our vision of real, true redemption as being free vessels of God's light, the more we can concentrate on that, fixate that in our imagination, in our vision, uh, then the more that will have an influence over the rest of the year. And that's very important. Also, there's another one that's uh, another great... Uh, Hasidic teacher, Rav Tzvi Hirsch Mirimno. Chodesh Zeh Uwa Rosh Lekol Minei Hitchatshut. You have to remember the, the Hebrew word for a month, Chodesh, is like the English word and some other languages is coming from moon. A moon month, okay? Luna, okay? It's a, you have that. Over here, Chodesh is coming from the Hebrew word Chadash. To renew. Chodesh is the Rosh, this month, especially, is the head, the culminate for all kinds of renewal that are supposed to come in this year. In this month, a person has the ability to merit, to power and, and strength. And that's not a nefesh of the of the mind and the soul that he will always have the ability to straighten himself and to renew his spiritual work every time all over again. So he has that power to start all over again, no matter how many how many mistakes he made, no matter how many times he fell, uh, and do not listen to the evil inclination that is cheating and saying, oh, whatever you've done, you've done, has no correction, God forbid. Which means this is a month for, and we're going to see later on, this is a month to get really intense power for the whole year to fight for our own freedom, for our own spiritual growth. Why is it that we stop fighting? We lose hope. But in this month is the time to get for the whole year the hope that we should not lose that hope. Okay, so th this is about the general idea of the magical power of the month of Nisan. And also many teachers say the month of Nisan, the word Nisan, the name Nisan, has the word Nes, Nisim, in it, miracles. And of course, if we are talking about the Exodus, the uh, firstborn plague, marching in the desert with a pillar of fire and pillar of smoke, and then 
crossing the Red Sea, the Egyptian army drowning in the Red Sea, there's the manna, all of that happened around that time. So this is a month of so many great miracles that the majority of humanity is still inspired by these miracles till today, 33 centuries later. Okay, so now, after we got kind of the uh, surrounding uh, picture, like the uh, frame, the framework, let's go into the details of understanding the month of Aries. So whoever is uh, knowledgeable a little bit in Kabbalah, we can see the pattern of the uh, basic uh, elements of Kabbalah in the structure of the calendar year. And we, first of all, we see four seasons and the four seasons co correspond to the four forces emanating from the creator. And they are um, re represented by the letters that, of the tetragrammaton. So number one is the spring and the spring is represented by the letter Yud, which is Sefirat Chokmah. And that represents the element of fire. That means that the three months of the spring, the core power behind them is Chokmah, which means the element of fire, and that is energy and creativity. The three months of the spring, Aries stores in Gemini are very energetical and very creative. Okay? Very the, in the core, there are fire signs. So, uh, although in other kinds of astrology, uh, it's only what you see on the right, under uh, where it says fire, earth, and air, Aries is fire sign, Taurus is an air sign, Gemini is an air sign. Yeah, that's on the superficial, but in the core, these are fire signs because, and that's why they're so energetic all three signs of the spring. Very energetic, very creative, and because the core of the spring is fire, okay? Now we have also the summer. The summer is the letter upper hay, Bina. This is the, the element of water, sharing and emotions. And then we have the fall, which is the letter represented by the letter Vav. That is the Anpin, the element of air, intellect and balance. And for the winter, we have the hay, the last say of the Tetragrammaton, which is Firat Malchut, and the earth, desire to receive. So we go to the spring and we realize that the Aries is a fire sign by the core. More than that, it is also a fire sign on the superficial level. So it's double fire. Double fire means uh, a lot of creativity, a lot of freedom, uh, because fire does not want to be controlled that much. However, and also a lot of selfishness, because fire is about receiving. You know, fire cannot stop taking. The moment fire stops taking, it's, it doesn't exist anymore. Okay, so it's very energetical, very creative. And Rabbi Zakhlor is saying, when you look at the fireplace, the flames are always recreating themselves. And that means that Aries has a very powerful um, element of recreation, recreating itself, of uh, creativity. And as we said, this is creativity for the whole year round. However, we see also that Aries is the right column of the spring, which means every, every uh, season has three signs, three signs, each sign is according to the order, right, left, and center. Right column is water, is giving and sharing. So Aries has two fire, one by the core, one on the superficial level, what everybody knows. And because it's the first sign of the spring, this is the, it has also water. And that's why Aries are very kind people very giving people. It's like, if you need help from somebody without questions asked, you go to Aries friends. They will always be there to give you, to share with you. If you need 
to uh, help in the middle of the night, uh, you ask your, your Aries friend, probably they're not sleeping, they don't like to sleep. Because it's the fire, they're always thinking about something that can be done. This is the most, on one hand, you have too much, so much fire. And on the other hand, you have water, which is giving and sharing with us, with others. Okay, so we already covered some stuff about the sign of Aries, but what we learned from there, from that, that sign of Aries, uh, because of the uh, dominance of fire and the letter H, there's a lot of egotism over here. A lot of desire, a lot of desire that needs to find uh, uh, a venue, like fire. Now, fire can heat, fire can do a lot of stuff. Aries, they need to find a venue and they need to be creative. They cannot be subjugated. They need the freedom and the, and the fiery uh, aspect of their nature is so strong that basically it's very easy for them to explode. Like really, if you get Aries upset, uh, <clears throat> they explode. And it, that explosion, it says as the uh, it says in the uh, books, kal lichos venoach dirzot. It's very easy for them to get upset. It's like setting a whole uh, <clears throat> a whole barrel of gas fuel on fire. It explodes, and then nothing. Everybody is around, like really under the explosion, wounded to earth, and they say, "What happened?" Very easy for them. It's over. I didn't really mean so. That's, it. That's very, very typical to Aries, and because of that, we go back to what we said in the beginning. Since the month of Aries is starting, we are all, all twelve signs of the zodiac, we are all under the influence of very dominant power of Aries. Very easy for people to lose it during the month of Aries. We do not want to lose it in the month of Aries because here it going, it's going to affect the whole year. So we really have to be as more uh, disciplined than ever and work on our vision, which means what is the kind of person that we would like to become this year. Okay, so the Aries is controlled, ruled, and created by the Hebrew letter He. But Aries is not the only player over here. The sign of Aries is under the planet Mars. Mars, or in Hebrew, Ma'adim. Ma'adim means the red planet. Mars, it means... It's known as the planet of wars. And it, this is being controlled, created by the Hebrew letter Dalit. Dalit, Dalit in Hebrew means core. And if you look at the letter Dalit, it has a very empty, hungry stomach. And that means very strong drive because hungry people, there are more created, satiated people, that their belly is full, they don't need to create. They're okay. So we know that the necessity is a matter of all inventions. And that's why the letter Dalit is the force behind Mars, planet Mars, which is known to be the planet of wars. The planet of wars, why the planet of wars? Because satiated people with big bellies don't go to war. They're too comfortable. Who are the people to go to war? These are the people that are not comfortable. These are the people that do not care for the comfort. They want to the conquer. They want to the fight. They want the achievement. They want the challenge. And that's why Aries people, that are less into sitting and enjoying a nice dinner, they're more into being pioneers, doing what nobody else has did before. They're the first of the, month of the year. 
So they jump always first. They need to be first. There's so much going head first. So many of them have scars on their head. Uh, this is a very, uh, very uh, common thing about Aries. Let's say if you want to build, I remember like anytime I wanted to build a startup or something, the moment you have a, a critical mass of Aries around you, you can start and you are going to make it happen because the Aries will be the first one and they don't care nobody did be before. You know what? They're very much excited that nobody did it before. They want to be the pioneers. They want to do it before everybody else. They want to do what nobody else did. And they want to go to uh, like to uh, places nobody went before and to win victories nobody ever tried to challenge before. Why? That combination of Dalit and Hay, which is to push forward and to move on. This is this is the uh, this is the planet Mars. Okay, also, so let's read something about, oh, we will we'll talk about Mars even more. So the Mars is adding to what we know about Aries, more warrior kind of, of nature uh, because of the hunger and the hunger for revelations, the hunger for growth is basically the engine for improvement. We all can use that uh, amazing power during the month of Aries. On the contrary, we also have to be really careful. Why being careful? Because uh, this very, very uh, explosive energy can explode in our face. And especially now, again, we are talking about the month of Aries 7, 5784. And everybody knows, you know, whoever just knows a little bit about what's going around the world, the world is going slowly, slowly on fire. Like since World War II, the world has never been so much on fire like today. All those kind of disciplined uh, nations that created the United Nations with the Charter of Human Rights the UN Charter, all of that, somebody kind of in the last few months uh, flush it down the toilet and you see that suddenly coming out of the woodwork, so much hatred, so much anti-Semitism that was illegal before, now it's in the opening like it used to be in the 30s. We are simply, can, we cannot see uh, that this story is going to relax soon and more and more uh, drums of war are being heard all around the planet. And we know when it's starting with anti-Semitism and in a big scale, finally the Jews, it's like the canary. It's just a sign that the big flood of gas and explosion is coming after that. So... For, for this year, we, it's very important for all of us to be really careful about, uh, about that discipline, about controlling that desire, that the letter H, which means the vessel, the desire under the vision. Yes, we can go for war against who? Against the negativity, against hatred. And, and first of all, it starts from within each one of us. You cannot, you cannot uh, scream and yell and demonstrate against hatred when you're full of hatred yourself. It's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You are just epitome of, of hatred. That it's like, uh, this is, uh, and, the, the, and hatred and anger and venom is idol worshiping. But I'm fighting against, against hatred. Yeah, but you are fanning that hatred that you're fighting against and you are becoming what you're fighting against. Okay, from uh, the meditations of this month are uh, therefore the letter Dalit and the letter Hay, drawing by them the light of God to give us the power to overcome the desire and harness it to be at service the vessel of God's light. 
you have also from the tetragrammaton. And now we know that uh, the Tikkunei Zohar is teaching us that on Rosh Chodesh, there are 12 different permutations of the tetragrammaton. Each one of them is the permutation of the frequency of one of the 12 months. Because this is the first month of the year, the permutation of this month is the straight UK Babke, the way it is written. It's, okay? And the initials for that is a, according to uh, <coughs> according to the uh, Zohar, is from Psalms 96.11 Yismechu HaShamayim V'tagel HaAretz the initials of this verse, Yismechu HaShamayim V'tagel HaAretz, this is Yud Kei Vav Kei, the Tetragrammaton, which means the heavens will be happy and the earth will rejoice. And that's basically the energy of the month of Aries. It is a holiday from the beginning, from the first day till the last day. Jesus. Every day has a special, amazing power that is being revealed. Every day has amazing power that is connected to the dedication of the, of the tabernacle that was on the first day of Aries. And then for 12 days, the heads of the tribes brought offerings and each one of them created another, another um, celebration. So that's the first 12 days. On the 13th days, that's the completion. On the 14th, this is already the day for the uh, eve of Passover. And then we celebrate Passover. Then seven days after Passover, we have seven days of holiday. And then this last seven days are going to be in days to come when Mashiach comes, the seven days of celebration of building the holy temple, the third temple. So it's like the beginning of, of, of a redemption and the last redemption, all of them connected. These are days to rejoice. And you know what? When you rejoice with the heavens and the earth and you are happy, you're not angry. And that is discipline, to be happy and not to be angry, and especially this time. Uh, from the Anna Bekoach prayer, the third line is the line that is to control the flow every day in the daily meditation. Na gibor doroshe yechudecha kevvat shomrem, nun gimel daled yud kavshin, this is the acrostic, of the uh, of that verse, this is very powerful for bringing in, getting the power to overcome any negativity of this month. It's also for creating miracles. And what is the main miracle? If we're talking about the month of miracle, when we, the word for miracle in Hebrew is nes, and sound says lanus velit noses, to flee up and above, up and above the box, which means when we are stuck into I want and I desire and I want and all of my and my and I need and all of that stuff, you are stuck in the dungeon, the box. Only when you make yourself the vessel for God's light, then you can create miracles. So we have over here also two uh, two meditations. The first is the first three. Letters, Nagibor Doshe, Nun Gimel Dalid, Neged, Onagad, Resistor, which is uh, these three letters are for opening the flow of sustenance, and the, uh, the crossings of the next three words, Yehudecha Kevavacho and Yud Kavshin, these three letters have the power to remove negativity from within and from others. Okay. What else do we have in the month of Nisan? So we have the tribe of Reuven. By the way, whoever likes the gems, you have there were 12 gems according to the tribes of Israel in on the breastplate of the Kohen. The one from for uh, 
Nisan, which is the tribe of Reuben, is Ruby. Ruby, Reuben, in the many uh, European languages, you call Reuben, Ruby, or Ruben. So uh, this is the, and it's again, a red stone. Okay, what do we know about Mars? Again, it's the letter Dalit. It rules over Aries and Scorpio. Both are warlike signs. And that influence is hunger, strong drives, motivations, creativity, daring, wars, and blood. However, the Talmud is saying, if you are born under the, under the power of Mars, it means that you could be a soldier, a hunter, a killer, Everything that is about blood, you can also become a surgeon, or a, or a butcher, or a cert, or a, or a um, mohel, which means making this, this this circumcision, because you have the ability to deal with blood and cuts without being afraid. Okay, that's the power of Mars. So, what are you going to become? That is your choice. Uh, the book of formation. It speaks about the creation of the letter Dalit and the Mar the Mar and Mars. And Rabbi uh, Avraham ben David of Foskiris, a great sage from Spain uh, some 800 years ago, says, mitzlev, courage, she'oif, stubborn, achzariyot, uh, cruelty, cheima vekas, rage and anger, murders and wars. This is judgment. And the generals. And the wars. And the ones who spilled blood. Which is hunting the blood of animals and the blood of people. Warriors. Also any kind of work that is connected to fire because he has the big fire and he has the red gold and the red pearls and everything in red. But it's also about a delay and fear and also being drunk and everything of hot, of warm, like a kitchen and the flesh, and the blood, and the hot spices, and the red wine. And it's from the tight side of judgment, uh, sexual dry, but out of judgment, like, uh, okay. And uh, so it's hatred, and envy, and uh, robbers, and wounds, and the hot uh, remedies. Uh, I won't go into it too much. There's, it's all the same. I think you got it. It's like really like a vision. All our job in the month of Nisan is to sweeten the judgments and to control, discipline the hay and the Dalit and turn them into the vessel for God's light. And that is basically especially on the night of the Seder. Do you know what Seder means in Hebrew? Order. When you overcome the Hay and the Dalit, when you overcome the Aries, when you overcome the Mars, when you transform all that fight to be a holy fight against the, the negative emotions that we have and overcoming that, like the matzah, like, or like chewing the maro, the maro, the bitter herb, maro, in is the uh, herb of Maor is controlled, the bitter herb is controlled by Mars, by the way. So when we chew it up and turn it sweet, it's like the work we do for the whole year. Because on the night of the Seder, at midnight, this is when, you know, it says that the life of people is being determined on Rosh Hashanah, but is sealed on Yom Kippur and especially at the end of Yom Kippur, and that's when we blow the shofar. But when it's speaking about wars, fights, and especially the fight, either wars among nations, 
who fights inside each one of us. The victory is determined on the night of the Seder. So the whole thing about eating the matzah, the bitter herbs, reading the Haggadah, Passover, it's all about taking that power of redemption again so we can be redeemed, overcome those desires and cravings, control them, discipline them, and harnessing them to bring Mashiach. So Chodesh uh, Tov, have a great month for all of us. We need it so much. And let's do the job already. Thank you so much.